Welcome to the prototype of the Silk Rip Motorsports ORR computer. This little box over on the right will substitute for our speed of the car since we're bench testing this prototype. We're going to turn the power on and up at the top you can see the ahead behind time in hundredths of a second. And in the bottom display, you see the miles in blue. I'm going to turn on this little function generator that simulates pulses coming in for speed. And now you can see the miles. We're at three tenths, four tenths, five tenths of a mile. And we're 20 seconds behind. Now we haven't started the ORR event yet. This particular demo simulates a run on uh, Highway 318 in either the Nevada Open Road Challenge or the Silver State Classic Challenge. The uh, green light in the lower right shows that the power is on. And actually when it starts blinking, it is receiving the GPS pulse per second signal so that we can synchronize your start time to exactly the atomic clock that the organizers use to time the event. This eliminates the problem of reaction time and raster scan delay time on the starting clock so that you get an exact starting time on the computer. Well now you can see that the green light is blinking, one blink per second which means that it is receiving the pulse per second signal on the GPS. So we're getting ready to start the event. I'm going to arm the computer with this switch. And then as soon as the clock reaches our starting time and the flagman waves us out, I'm going to push this red push button, the mark push button and we're off. You can see that the mileage went back to zero and started over again. And the ahead behind time, we're starting to get behind time as we accelerate from the start trying to get up to our target speed. So what I'm doing is adjusting the speed here with this little knob. So as I accelerate, increase the speed, we'll get a little bit closer to uh, our target speed. We're now three miles into the course and we're seven seconds behind, which is pretty typical depending on your target speed. And now we've pretty much stabilized. We're at our target speed. At this point, I'm going to clear and we're going to get ready for the next waypoint. The next waypoint is at 9.4 miles in this particular setup, which is the county line sign. And this just serves as a tire warm-up because the tires expand uh, as they get hotter. So we're going to run the first 9.4 miles and then uh, do another red push button so that the computer uh, starts off at 9.4 miles and the tires are up to uh, temperature and up to the right size. So as we get close to the county line sign, here we are at eight miles, I'm going to arm the computer. And here's the county line sign. And now I'm going to clear. 
The next waypoint, uh, it's at uh, 36.6 miles, which is after Flag Station 3, right about at Flag Station 4 at the base of Notch Mountain. There's a guide rail on the right as you come out of the very long left-hand sweeper and that guide rail where it starts on the right hand side is 36.6 miles into the course and that's what we'll use as uh, our next waypoint. So we haven't reached the 36.6 mile waypoint yet but we're reaching an interesting point where uh, we're going fast enough that we're cutting down our deficit and pretty soon you'll see that minus sign over on the upper left start to flicker And if I can adjust the speed just right as we're on this long straightaway, you'll be able to, uh, we're ahead now by almost half a second. And I'm lowering the speed so that we can get back to where you can see that minus sign flickering. When you cross the finish line, you really want to have that minus sign flickering because that's just uh, between slightly ahead and slightly behind. So we're 0 0.06 seconds ahead. And there you see the minus sign. Now you see it flickering. And flickering is good. Now you can see we're 2.3 seconds ahead, uh, 32.8 miles into the course. One of the great features of this computer, unlike competitive systems, is that it not only corrects for the mileage when you pass a known waypoint, but it also automatically recalculates your mileage factor, that is, how far you um, travel for each half revolution of the tire. So it does a really great job for you. Now as we get close to flag station 4 and the big left hand curve we're getting close to this uh, waypoint and I'm going to show you a simulation of us being late as we go past this. So it should be at 36.6 but let's say we're not there yet because of uh, tire expansion issues. So I'm a little bit late in doing that and it um, made us uh, not quite as far ahead when it corrected the time and the mileage. But as I said it also is recalculating the mileage factor and using a new mileage factor for the tires at this at this point in time. It'll also recalculate at the next two waypoints. The next waypoint is quite a long ways away at 66.445. That's the White River Narrows sign, the great big huge wooden sign as you get close to the Narrows. So as we get closer to the White River Narrows sign at 66.445, you can see that we've built up a cushion of time 11.7 seconds ahead and that's pretty typical for a lot of people who are going to go slower through the narrows than their target speed. And again I'm going to arm the computer for the waypoint at the White River narrow sign. And this time uh, instead of uh, showing you what happens when we're a little bit late, I'm going to show you what happens when we get to that sign just slightly early because of a difference in tire expansion. So it should be 66.445. We'll make it about here. And I'm going to clear. Where will you see those results? You'll see those results in the computer log. Again, that's one of the great features of this 
computer system is at the end of the race, you can cycle through the log and it will show you exactly what happened at each of the waypoints, how far ahead or behind you were at the waypoint coming into it, and what mileage you were at before it got corrected to the waypoint mileage. Now I'm going to reduce the speed as we go through the narrows and we'll start to use up that cushion. Here we are just coming into that off camber right hand turn and you can see that we're starting to eat into some of that cushion as we go through the narrows. And now we'll start to increase the speed as we come out of the narrows. And you can see we didn't have quite enough cushion. We're going to be about two or three seconds behind coming out of the narrows. The next waypoint is going to be at the curve sign just before the triple curves leading on to the final straightaway and that's at 84.426. So when we get close to there, we'll again arm the computer, and then when we pass the curve sign, we'll hit the mark push button. So we're coming up to the curve sign, and we're just about on time, not too bad. I'm going to arm for the curve sign, you can see how incredibly useful it is to have the ahead behind time continuously displayed to you. And you can see the little flickering of the minus sign. And now the next waypoint is at the top of the hill before the finish line where the male summit road sign is on the right hand side of the road and that's at 88.019 so that's the next waypoint and now we really want to uh, focus on getting the car on time so I need to speed up just slightly and as we get closer to that Mill Summit Road sign, I'm arming. You see the nice flicker there a little bit. And now I'm going to arm for the finish line. And so as soon as we pass the finish line, I'm going to hit the mark button. I've already armed for it. And there we are. I was slightly late pushing the push button at the finish line. So instead of 90.000, it's 90.014. And we were four one hundredths of a second early. Now I can show you the log. So you go and park your car in the finish pits. And if you want to see a log of how you did, you just continue this sequence. We're going to arm, and this shows minus 0, 0 0.39. That means that we were 0.39 seconds late from the top of the second 
on the atomic clock uh, at the start. And that's very typical. It's a typical uh, delay time, your reaction time. Sorry, your reaction time is about two tenths of a second. And um, and then the miles, it doesn't matter. That's just whatever miles were in there uh, when you were at the start. And it zeroes that out when you start. The next log display shows that this was waypoint zero. And it shows 60, zero, zero, zero. And that's the mileage factor of 60,000. That's the mileage factor that we started with. That is actually the number of millionths or ten millionths of a mile for each half revolution of the tire. And that corresponds to about three feet. Then, if you remember, we were uh, behind time because we were still trying to recover from the start, start standing start. And uh, so we were minus 8.34 seconds at the county line sign, which should have been at 9.4, but we actually passed it at 9.442. So there was some discrepancy between our mileage factor measuring and the uh, official measurement. But that's okay, because it corrected it to 9.4 at that point. And that was waypoint number one, and it didn't change the mileage factor because that was just the tire warm-up. Next, we see that we were 3.9 seconds ahead at the guide rail at 36.6, and I said I was going to show you that we were late, so I actually pushed the push button at 36.685 to show that uh, the mileage factor was off a little bit. So that's waypoint number two. And now you can see that instead of 60,000, the mileage factor has automatically been changed to 59,813. At the White River Narrow sign, if you remember I said we were going to push the push button a little bit early, we were 12.7 seconds ahead because we were building up a cushion to compensate for going through the Narrows. And instead of 66.445, we were at 66.231. So at that waypoint number three, the mileage factor jumped up from the 59,000 whatever to 60,244. Then at the curve sign, we were four one hundredths of a second early, and instead of 84.426, it was 84.447. My, that's waypoint number four, and the mileage factor changed slightly to 60,173. At the Mill Summit Road sign, we were four one hundredths of a second early, and instead of 88.019, we were 88. 022. That was waypoint number five. The mileage factor doesn't change because we don't want to uh, make changes to the mileage factor with such short distances involved. And then this shows we were 0 0.03 seconds early before you showed we showed 0 0.04, but um, it'll be within a hundredth of a second. And we were at 90.014 when we pushed the push button at the finish. That's probably good for a trophy.